everybody, Jacqueline here. I hope you are having a wonderful day. And by the title of this video, you see that we are talking about zines. So first of all, what is a zine? A zine is a self-published booklet um, that artists and makers will create themselves and then they'll photocopy it and distribute it to other people. You can see them at bookshops or coffee shops. Sometimes you'll see it at the library. I decided that I wanted to make my own zine. So I looked into it and there's a couple different types of zines. There's a personal zine where you can make a whole thing about your own personal life and share things that you want to. Um, it can be deep dark secrets. It can be fun, lighthearted, funny things you do with your friends. It can be whatever it needs to be um, to get your personal ideas out there. Um, another one is an informational zine. I've seen um, some that are like how to garden, how to take care of your house plants inside. Um, it can be any informational type zine you want it to be. There's also fan zines where if you're a big fan of whatever it can be. I could talk about colored pencils and just be like, why well, I love colored pencils and you should love colored pencils too. And you can make it lighthearted and just talk about something that you're a big fan of. It could be a movie that you're really into or, or you know, it could just be anything. But I thought that I would make a sketchbook zine. So it's not necessarily like a start to finish, it's done and then I distribute it. It's more so I create it so that I can sketch inside of it. So that's what I'm going to talk about today. But ultimately a zine is just a small little booklet where you can express your art, your ideas, your creativity, or whatever you want it to be. That's what you have the joy of doing. You get to make this be whatever you want it to be. So stick around to the end of the video if you want to see how I go about making my zines um, that's made out of one sheet of paper, no staples, no book binding, just super duper easy. So stick around for that. You might be thinking, why make a sketchbook zine that I'm telling you about today? Well, one, it doesn't have to just be sketches. That's just what I personally want to do with mine. It can be writings. It can be poetry if you're into poetry and you want to like write that out. It could be a combination of the two. You could be drawing and writing about what's happening around you. But I like zines because they're much smaller. You don't have to bring your full sketchbook with you. You can feel more accomplished by finishing the very few pages that are actually in a zine um, when you fold it all up. Uh, so it just makes you feel more accomplished of not having to have the worry of, I have this full sketchbook full of pages <laughs> and it might be a little intimidating. So I like it to make me feel like I've accomplished something much quicker. <laughs> and the nice thing is, is they are super easy to make and very convenient to just take it, pop it into your backpack, your tote bag. For me, sometimes it's even throwing in my backpacking backpack when I've gone on backpacking trips. Um, so it's just really convenient for you to make and slide it into one of your bags. So what are some inspiration topics or ideas for you to make your first scene? Um, I'm going to show you the two that I have here. Um, my first one is a travel scene. I created this one so I could take it with me to Sweden when my husband and I went on our backpacking trip. Um, I thought this would be really easy. I had my little pieces of paper to paint on, but I thought for drawing, instead of bringing loose sheets of paper or a sketchbook, I would make a zine out of one large piece of paper. Um, so I made a nice little travel zine. I also have one, because um, I was having fun that day, I made a second one, and I call this one my lazy zine. <laughs> this lazy zine is the one that I keep on my coffee table or sometimes even in the studio here when I'm on the couch watching TV or a movie or something. This is just my lazy zine. It has no rhyme or reason. It has random um, sketches. It has colored pencil sketches. And then I still have the last spread to do. Um, so you can also just make a lazy zine, as I call it, to just be whatever you want it to be. Um, and then by showing these, a uh, tip that I like to do is I like to decorate the covers. 
Um, it helps me with just knowing what the category, the topic is that I want this to be. And both of these I chose to do uh, graphite drawings of florals. Now the insides of them are not florals at all, but I had really fun like just drawing them this way and I thought all my zines might have, for a while anyways, floral drawings on them, even though the insides might be a little different. Again, this is whatever you want it to be and it's so small, you know, just one, two, three full spreads that it's like, okay, you can kind of do whatever you want because you could finish it more quickly. Another idea would be to make a zine that you toss in your tote bag whenever you go to the coffee shop. Um, you could even get colored paper if you wanted to and maybe all your coffee shop um, zines are all a nice tan mocha type color because coffee, I don't know, just an idea. Um, so that every time you go to the coffee shop you can sit there and write if you're people watching about what people are doing or sketching your coffee out or your little pastry item you got. So you can take it to the coffee shop and you can also make zines. I thought you could do like your hobbies. So let's say you're a gardener and you, every time you go out to your garden throughout the spring and summer and fall, uh, you see different flowers that are happening. So you could sketch them, you could write about them, you could make a little log about it to be like, oh, the sunflowers came in August, but in the springtime, this plant, I don't know much about gardens. I want a garden, but I don't know much about gardens or the timings of them. But that would be a perfect zine for me to make to be like, this is the springtime, this is the summertime um, spreads. And just do that or just draw or paint really cute little watercolor drawings of your, of your flowers that you see. Or maybe the bugs or the insects that you see. But you, you see where I'm, I'm getting with this? Like you can create an idea like a garden zine and just you could create a lot of them. You can make a volume one, volume two, volume three. Like that would just be really, really fun to create. You, the possibilities are pretty endless. <laughs> My husband and I just recently started getting into baking together. So I thought I could make like a baking zine. And every time we bake something, I could down in like the corner or something, draw whatever we um, created. Like uh, we just made some scones, some pumpkin spice scones recently. We're super ready for fall but i could like draw the scones i could put the ingredients i could say that we had it with a cup of milk or you know some strawberries or something so you can make a whole cute summer baking or fall baking zine or something um and that's just for you the wonderful thing about these zines is you don't have to go copy them and make multiple copies and give them to people you don't have to do that you can that's another, actually, one of my ideas is you can make one as gifts for people, but you also can just make this for yourself um, and just have it in your kitchen and just be like, oh, that was so fun, you know, when we did that baking summer or something like that. Another idea is you can make a zine to gift people. Let's say your best friend is moving to another state because that's where her family or his family, you know, is taking them. So you can make a zine and you can make like little comic strips or something and put inside jokes you if you draw and do comics you could draw like a funny thing that happened and just something that you could give your friend um just memories that you had together and it will just put a smile on their face because when people move away there's lots of tears being shed and sadness happening but why not make it a nice little joyful moment by creating something that you can gift them that they can look at as they're driving or flying off to their new place that they are moving to also speaking about friends, you also have friends come over to your place. So you could make like a coffee table zine. You could make it be really funny. It could be inside jokes with like if a group of friends always come over for board games or something like that. You can make a zine that sits on your coffee table. So when your friends or guests or family come over, when they're, you know, you're all just sitting around the coffee, the coffee table, when you're all just sitting around, you know, on the couches, they can look at it and they don't have to feel like they need to walk around to look at your art on the walls. Maybe you have art, you make a little art zine that sits on your coffee table um, for them to look at. So we like placing zines around the place. Actually, we were, when we were in Sweden and we were hiking um, in one of the uh, outdoor bathrooms, someone made a zine. Now it was all in German maybe, or maybe it was Swedish, but somebody made a cute little zine that they like hooked to 
that you could read while you do your business. So, I mean, literally you could make zines for anything. <laughs> if you have the fear of the blank page, um, even with a zine, even though a zine is only a couple of spreads, a couple of pages, you might still look at it and be like, okay, I have an idea about the baking zine or the gardening or a travel zine when I go on my travels. You may not know what you want to put on the front. Um, tip number one, I've already discussed it, you can make a fun little cover. Um, both of these I decided to do graphite floral drawings and then I just kind of played around with the typography of writing travel zine number one and lazy zine number one and when I fill these and I'm done with them I'll make a number two and a number three. Um, so that's one way. And then another way, there is an artist here on YouTube her name is Katie Moody. I'll link her down below. Um, she's also, I think, made zines before, but in her sketchbook, she calls them panels, where you draw like squares and rectangles. You could even make funky shapes if you want to. Um, but she does this so that you can just have little tiny squares. So it's already a small zine, couple of pages, but it also has, if you want to do this, um, little panels just to help, you know, your brain be like, okay, all I have to do is fill in this little square, this little rectangle or something. Um, so that's another idea that you can do. Next, I'm gonna talk about all the supplies that I have. So I'm gonna do an overhead so you can see that, but I do want to mention that you can also, for some of these supplies, if you don't have them, like scissors or different things or cutters, you can go to your local library. You can go to like an Office Depot or a FedEx. They usually have stations that will have like, if you need to cut paper, like one of those big, whatever they're called, you know, cutting paper things. Um, they have scissors, they have rulers. Um, sometimes they'll have tape if you need tape or something. Um, so yeah, so you can also go to those places if you need any of those items. But I'm going to pop over here and I'm going to show you all the things that I use to make these zines. And another little note I forgot to say about when you want to potentially decorate the front of your zines, you can also do collages. I meant to say you don't just have to do sketches or writing. You can also do collages. If you're a person that likes to gather magazines and then cut out pieces of your magazine to go into a zine, you can do that as well. So. Don't feel like you just have to do pencils or pens. I was just trying to make this as easy as possible for beginners to be like, start with the paper, start with the pencil, that's all you need to begin. But you can elevate it with doing things like that. Okay, so I'm going to show you the tools that you need slash I use to make my little zines. Now by all means, <laughs> that rhymed, um, by all means to make your zines, um, you don't have to have every single one of these. I would suggest having paper and scissors. That's probably the most basic that you need. Um, these extra things are just because I have them in my tool, tool belt, so I'm going to use them. So to make these size zines, I have... It's a big boy. <laughs> um, I thrifted this for about less than $4 um, at a Salvation Army this past springtime, I think, but it's one of those big Canson mixed media papers. And this is a 14 by 17 inch um, mixed media paper, and I was really happy to use it, so I'm going to rip out a piece of paper of this. So I have this big sheet. You can also, I will show you how you can do it with just a regular piece of paper from like um, your printer, so just printer paper. This is perfect for if you have kids um, and you can fold it up and you can make a whole bunch and give them to each of your kids that you have to be like, here's your zine and your zine and, you know, they can create inside of those. But I'm going to show you with the big sheet so you can see how I go about making this size. So it's really, really simple. You're going to start with folding it. I folded the, what is this, the hamburger style, not the hot dog style. I remember learning that as a kid. I'm going to start with trying to get it. Now, I might be more precise if I wasn't doing this on the camera, but that's okay. Um, lining up the corners, going down the middle. You can use your hands. You can use, um, people have those 
I think they're called like bone folder file something. <laughs> um, I also have this letter opener I like to use. Um, you can use the, you know, just anything with a straight edge. It could be a pencil, it could be a letter opener. <laughs> and this is just a nice way to get a better crease. Just be careful because sometimes um, this could mark up your pages, but if it's just your sketchbook one, it's totally fine. So you fold once, then you're gonna fold a second time. Creasing it, making those creases nice and crisp. And then I'm gonna fold a third time. So not this way, I'm gonna fold it this way. The paper's getting a little bit thicker, a little bit harder to work with, but that's okay. Push that down. Get this crease going. There we go. So now I have created all of my little pages. So you're going to unfold it. So it looks something like that. Now what you're going to do is you will be cutting this crease right here from this to this. There's two ways you can go about it. You can use a self healing mat like I have here with an X-Acto knife. Um, or if you don't um, do it that way, or you don't have an X-Acto knife, there's already this crease here. You can fold right there and with a pair of scissors, or I guess also X-Acto knife if you wanted, but with scissors, you can cut from here to here so that it gets both of those sides. So I'm just gonna do it with scissors to make it a little bit easier. But I'm just going to cut right along the crease not all the way through, just to there. So you should end up with something like this, where you have this little mouth happening. And now the fun part of the folding it all back together. So you're going to fold it down, follow the crease, and then when you put it up this way, you'll see that there's like this mouth happening, like, hello. You are going to push these two ends together and that is where you start folding it. And then you can use whatever you want to flatten it all out. Oh, didn't need that side. And voila, you have made yourself a nice zine. So now it opens. Now obviously you're not going to be drawing on that side. So you could even tape that down if you wanted to. But now you have your little zine to create. So then it would look something like these ones. So I'll show you this um, more up close. So I just did um, again some graphite drawings and then I actually sprayed it with a fixative because I used a really really soft lead and it started smearing. You can see that a little bit. So I sprayed this side with a fixative um, to make it not be so smeary. Um, I just did some quick sketches in here. Did like two minute sketches, three minute sketches. This was just something fun I was doing one evening. Um, this was a couple weeks ago when Katie Moody did a uh, whole thing of just painting, or she painted, but I just used colored pencils that day because um, it was just a nice fun little exercise. And then I have this whole spread and the backside to continue. Then I have my travel zine. Um, I did show this in a video where I did like my souvenirs I got when we went to Sweden and Italy. Um, so I'm still not done with it. I have been working on other things, but I just started doing some of the sketches in here. Um, we also went to Venice. So I started doing quick little sketches when we were in Venice. Um, and then when we came home, I decided to start doing the second section that we did. So it's kind of out of order. I should have thought about that, but that's okay. Um, but I just made all these little panels and I have my pictures I'm gonna draw off of. Um, I wanted to finish it before I got this video, but totally okay that I didn't, it's okay. But my lazy zine is almost done. So that's why I also wanted to make another one like this. But I'm going to quickly show you with a sheet of paper um, again, if you have kids or you just need to start off somewhere um, 
just, you just want to start off making zines today, let me show you quickly with a piece of printer paper. So you saw me probably finagle with that real quick. Uh, it was messing up on me, but once I was able to finagle it and make it a little bit more squared off, um, you have this very easy little zine here. I think this is what was giving me issues. There we go. That's a little bit easier. Sometimes the creases don't do what you want them to do. <laughs> but this would be a perfect little thing that you could make a gift for, like I said. You can toss this in your purse or your, your backpack or something so you can just doodle and sketch. So really easy ways to just go about making a nice, easy, simple zine. So I hope uh, all this tools showing you how easy it is to make um, inspires you to make your own. There you have it. There is my video about how to go about making your own zine. Have you made a zine before? Um, I've heard of zines like back in college, but this is the first time this year me actually making zines. Um, it's really, really fun. So I'd love to know if you've made any before, if this is going to be your first time trying it out. I'd love to know that as well. And if you have any tips about how you go about making zines, do you do it differently? Do you have other ideas or categories that people can do? I know this isn't your typical way of going about doing zines, but I thought it was really fun to share. So let me know in the comments down below your thoughts on zines and how you do it or your DIY ideas that you might have for it. Um, created a really nice community down there in the comments where other people can read what people have said and you can just learn from it. So yeah, I think that that's it. Just looking at my notes here to make sure I'm staying on track. Uh, yeah, I hope you all have a wonderful, wonderful day and I'd love to see your zines and I will see you all in the next one. Cheers.